in futures, you're trading in the liquidity. There is no outside sources. It's This is it, which is why professionals go there. That's why large firms execute in those markets because they're they're not going to have the same funny money games that Forex has and crypto has. Okay. Um, let me check my notes real quick here. Uh, so by looking at having a very small window of expectation on what you should be trying to pull out of the marketplace, that being five handles. If we go through this process and you take three months and you can't get five handles, but you can show a record of you doing consistently three to four handles each time you do it. You're not there at five handles, but you're able to go in there, see when it's going to likely move in one direction or the other. And you can time it with a small time frame. Because if you can time it with a small time frame, you can time it with a larger time frame. The larger time frame just takes more time to deliver it. But it's the same thing because price is fractal. It's the same things that are occurring on these small one minute, five minute charts are occurring on weekly and monthly charts. It just takes a whole lot more time. I don't have the patience for that. Some of you might have the patience for that. You may have the predisposition to do, hey, I can do um, a, a trade on a weekly chart. I don't want to go anything lower than a weekly chart. I, I don't know how anybody could do that because that's an incredible amount of patience. I don't have that much patience. I can change my mind very quickly. Uh, I can have something distract me and take me out of a train of thought. And it takes me time to get back in sync. So if I'm a trader that requires just daily candles and I get a news report or something happens and we break out into some kind of conflict in another country or a uh, you know, a scandemic breaks out again, something to that effect. All that stuff's going to take my attention and dilute it from what I'm trying to do in the marketplace. And I won't be able to focus. So because I am obsessively compulsive and I'm bipolar, I'm wrestling a lot of mental baggage, okay, that I can't fix. I'm hardwired this way. I can't fix it. So I found where I can engage where it gives me plenty of opportunity, even if I lose my focus, someone distracts me, um, my children distract me, I'm late to my chart because of something, you know, I have to eat something or I have to, you know, relieve myself. You know, we're all human beings. Something has you away from the charts and you can't be there. Okay, that's fine. A one in five minute chart puts me right back in sync with things and I can find another setup. Every single 60 minute candle has an opportunity for you to trade that 2022 model. What? Yeah. During those times I've taught you to focus on, not every hour, during those hours of 8.30 to 9.30 to 10.30, every hour candle, if you strip that down to 15 second candles, that 2022 model exists there. What? Yeah. There's a... What was the, uh, there was a children's movie my, my youngest son drove us to a couple years ago. Dr. Seuss. Something, the fact that, uh, like, there was this elephant or whatever, at least it looked like an elephant. And they lived in this world or whatever. And he heard somebody talking or these little characters you know, talking in this flower or something. The, the memory is vague, but I remember when, they zoomed into this world. It was a whole lot of things going on in, inside there where it's microscopic. Well, if you're looking at an hourly candle and imagine that you had a microscope and you drilled down into that one hour candle and how much movement took place inside that one hour candle. And you look at it through the lens of a 15 second chart. That 2022 model is there every single hour. The fluctuations are not going to be monumental, but that same thing can be programmed and coded as an algorithm that fires just like that autonomously. Your perception of price is so heavily taken out of focus with the books, the logic that people teach you, they don't 
know how the price is really going to book. They have no idea where it's likely to go next. And the, the, the evidence is how they're trading. Like, I watch live streamers just because I want to see when I see their expectation on a marketplace opposed to what I'm expecting price to do. I have a 90% edge that my setup at that moment is going to work at that time. Now, when you hear that, that sounds like you're a jerk. You're arrogant. Listen to what you just said. You're, you're shitting on all these live streamers. No, I'm not. I didn't say one live streamer. I didn't specifically name anybody. There's seven of them that I'm now seven of them that I follow. A couple of them are just very inconsistent. Some of them are consistent. But collectively, when I have all of them, when all of them are looking for something and they start using keywords like there's no way or I think it's really going to. When they start using descriptors, I'm listening for that. They're on very low volume. When I'm looking to do a trade and when I hear all of them start chattering the same way. Oh, I think it's going to go down when I'm looking for the buy side liquidity. And when I see a fair value gap or institutional overflow entry drill, or it runs sell side on a one minute chart or a 15 second chart. And they're saying that very thing at that moment that they're expecting it to go down. Oh, it's going to break here. Watch this trend line break. Watch this descending triangle. It's going to go this way. All the moving averages are pointing down. That's exactly what I want to hear. That's exactly because it's like, that's it. I have that very moment encapsulated in time where smart money is arm wrestling neophyte retail traders logic. That moment, that very, very instant. You're in a 90% bracket right there. Now, some of these live streamers are still making money in that day. But I'm listening for that sentiment reading that I'm, I'm trying to get that from them. I'm not in their live streams shitting on them. I'm not talking about them. I'm not trolling them. I'm not doing that. Most of the time, they're not even aware that I'm here. But I'm listening. I want to hear their descriptive tone say they are committed to this going one direction or the other. And I'm waiting for that to occur when I'm looking for my market move. And if I have a PD array right there at the time and I hear that, I don't smile. I don't smirk. I just know that, OK, I, I'm, I have now retail sentiment telling me exactly what I want to see as an opposing view. And because I trade with smart money logic and concepts, that arm wrestling match between someone that reads retail books and is reacting to price versus I'm sitting and waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for something to occur in the market, in price. And I know that retail traders, that's why you see me sometimes comment and say, retail wants to go long here. Retail thinks this. that's the very time I'm hearing, if you see it ever in my live recordings or I'm annotating the chart where I'm in the trade or where about to move a stop or take partials or whatever. I'm listening to that. And that's why I'm prompting it in the chart because I'm getting feedback from live streamers that are telling me that that's what they see. And when they lose and it goes the other direction, the more disgruntled or the faster they feel like, oh no, or oh, they sent, they sent like they're surprised, the better the trade is. So I, I know I'm going to run to my buy side or my next partial rather quickly at that time. And you'll see me say what? I want to see speed and distance. <laughs> Oops. I see deep just let the cat out of the bag. That's what I'm doing. I'm listening to retail traders literally tell me the opposing side real time. Real time. And that gives me the juice with my own concepts knowing that, okay, this, this is going to really deliver. Nice. but. In, in all actuality, it's occurring all the time. If you don't believe me, look at some of the posts I've done where I've done my executions, and you'll see students say, um, I got stopped out there. I thought it was going to go the other direction. How did you figure out that that was a long, or why did you go short there? I was trying to do the opposite. So even in that capacity, you can see that it is a phenomenon there. So I love, I absolutely love the fact that these you know, these souls out there are willing to put themselves out in front of the entire world and push a button and share their intelligence 
or lack thereof, not to be disrespectful because some of them are streaming before they even learned how to trade. But others are out there being profitable, but I love hearing them become very committed to one side of the marketplace. It doesn't mean just because they start saying, hey, look, I'm, uh, it's going to really crash down here or it's going to sink. It's no way it's not going to um, go down. Just because they say that doesn't mean I'm going in there fading them. That, that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is if I'm already anticipating something and then I hear the retail squawk box that I create with these live streamers, that moment when they do that, that to me is a, that's it. That's the last check on all the boxes that need to be for a really quick low resistance liquidity run because it's exactly when they would not expect it to occur. And I'm capitalizing on them because they're trying to keep their social media equity curve increasing. So they want to constantly give engagement to their viewers and they want to constantly sugarcoat and entertain. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely commendable. And if they're consistently doing something and they can make money, great. Who cares? I'm only trying to tell you what it is I'm listening to these live streamers for. I'm listening for that moment, that very moment where they're absolutely now committed. If I am expecting something in the opposing direction and I have a PD array that I'm, I'm, I'm watching, when I hear them say that, that registration of committal on their part, and if it's just one of them, not so much. But when they all start, and it's almost like they're crickets. They start chirping together. Like, you know, it, it's weird. It's a crazy phenomenon, but it's literally like fade 101 if you're using the things I'm teaching you in price. Not all the time. Not everything they say can be faded. That's not what I'm saying here. But that's, what I'm, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm listening to specific live streamers. So please, if you know that I'm a follower of your live stream, that's not meant to be disre disrespectful to you, okay? Um, I think what I just said was rather balanced. I, I didn't make anyone sound or Im imply that any of them were failed traders. I didn't say that at all. I'm just saying for my personal study and an observation in a laboratory experiment, when I teach my sons how to do this, I'm telling them that, look, listen to what they're saying right now. Do you see that? And you see how what I'm showing you is opposed to that. Just sit back and watch what happens. Now, I ain't going to lie. They're laughing and saying, you know, how can they not see this? Well, of course, they're not aware that what we're having this discussion about. They're not privy to it. But I'm privy to their expectation and their bias because they're making it public, right? So I'm capitalizing on that. Much like all the meme stock traders that were in Reddit saying they were going to beat the hedge fund managers. <laughs> no, you weren't. And you can see their stocks have been smashed. They didn't do what they said they were going to do. Okay, so they used that sentiment reading in Reddit's chat rooms or whatever it is they use. I've never been on Reddit before, but I told you all on Twitter, I said, don't, don't touch these stocks because now they have the bait. Everybody thinks they're going to be able to muscle it up. There's a lot of people that are buying it, but why didn't it go to the moon? Because it doesn't work that way, folks. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I, I, I know it's frustrating because if you're new and you think, oh, it's going to go up to the moon. No, no, it's not. Especially when everybody thinks it's going to go up there. It's not. Uh, in passing, real quick, I'll, I'll just mention this. Um, I saw a tweet. Some guy sent me a, a SpongeBob meme. Something to help. You said uh, um, Bitcoin to 10,000. Um, I'm not a crypto trader. But I believe once they roll out all the central bank digital currencies, that all of your crypto is going to go to shit. And I'm okay with being wrong. I don't have a, I don't have a horse in the race. I don't care. I don't care about that. Okay. But I wouldn't be buying it, and I wouldn't be looking for it to go to twenty thousand. I wouldn't be looking for it to do anything. It's going to probably be very frustrating. It could stay chopping in here between twenty two thousand and whatever the low of the you know, most recent low was. It can just bang around in there for a long time. It makes no sense to me. I don't like the asset class. And there's better real markets to trade with precision. So I'm not worried or influenced by anybody that is a fanatic with crypto. Anytime this thing goes up a little bit, you all think it's going to Saturn. Okay, fuck the moon. You're, you're, it's going out of the solar system. 
And it's just, it's unfortunate because that has hurt more people than I think than any asset class in the last 20 years. Like that, that mindset of it can only do that when that's not true. Markets can stay in a choppy, shitty ass trading range for a long time. And you're the whole time expecting it to go to the moon and, and drive you nuts. Fuck that. If I'm going to be in here in these markets, I'm going in there where I'm going to make money, find my setup, get in there, get it and run. And I'm going to live my life. Not obsessively looking at my phone, worrying about who's going to say something bad about crypto or Bitcoin. Oh, no. FUD. Or I don't even fuck that. To, I think it's I think it's FUD. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about it. OK, I just know that that segment of Twitter and the trading community are just wild. Like they're just really, really wild. And I wish I could get that same fevered pitch into futures. <laughs> could you imagine? It would be so amazing because you would have such a, a, a rich sentiment reading because crypto sentiment is perpetual bull. I mean, there's a lot of smart folks out there know that, okay, yeah, it's probably not going to go up because it's going to do this and do that. But by far and large, crypto really is like, it's a circus. Like it, and it's carnival. Like it's absolutely insanity. And unfortunately, a lot of new money, a lot of new traders came into trading through that, expecting it to go to them and expecting it to do really well. And I mentioned, you know, you got to be careful. You know, it's going to go to shit. And look how many times we've had like the FTX stuff. And you know, my own son, he has his shit caught up in uh, a broker he can't get his money out of. Okay, because he didn't listen to good old ICT, his daddy. So it's frustrating. And I know I'm going to be frustrated because some of you are going to do things that you're told not to do. You're going to do things that you were never told to do. And you're probably going to hurt yourself this year. And I want to remind you all, that's your fucking fault. That's your fault. You did that to yourself because there's nobody's ever going to say ICT caused me to lose money because I've always taught in a paper trading account or demo, and they're in a fucking court anywhere. They're going to say, oh, yeah, this demo trader, this demo trade, this concept in a demo trade caused you to lose money. You took the initiative to push a button, and I'm telling you, don't push a fucking button this year. Don't. Don't. Learn how to read price. Learn your own tendencies to be impulsive. That's going to be a painful lesson for you. What's impulsive mean? Gentlemen, you're walking next to your girlfriend or your spouse, significant other. You're walking and all of a sudden, out the corner of your eye, miss everything, miss thang. Dressed to the gills, beautiful, lovely. What's your eye do? Look over. Now, you know at that moment, that moment right there, you better get your shit fixed real quick before your significant other catches you looking. But now what do you do? You make sure the coast is clear. Then you look back again. And then now you're undressing her. That's impulsive. That's the thing that you know you should not do. But you fucking did it, didn't you? And you might get away with it once in a while. You might get away with it at that instant. But if you live your life like that, your significant other is going to catch you doing that. And what do you think they're going to say? Now, if you're in a long-term committed relationship, they're going to let you pfft, nudge you with their elbow. What are you doing? Get, you can't get that. But if you're in a young, new, fledgling relationship, and you haven't really committed yourself to either party, and it's something new and fresh, you're going to feel insecure if your significant other is looking at someone else like that and gawking. Because you're going to think, oh, they're looking somewhere else. The grass is greener on the other side. That's impulsive. How's that related to trading? Well, ICT said that he thinks it's going to go up to 4,030. And I'm in front of the charts right now. And he, he's, he had mentioned that fair value gap. So that's pretty much like you know, him saying buy it right now. So you know, even though he hasn't said anything about really technically buying it, and he hasn't really said where the stop loss should be on this particular fair value gap yet, I've got you know pretty good feeling that you know, the grass is greener right now. If I just go in there and just do, you know, just do one contract, just buy one contract. And because of the 430, I won't say nothing. You know, and he'll probably think it's funny. He might like my post if I say, I know I didn't listen, boss, blah, blah, blah. And then I made that 430, you know, high five every week, every, every day and it won't stop. No, that's impulsiveness. 
Okay. You do the things I tell you to do. You don't do the things I tell you not to do. Focus on the things I'm telling you to focus on and nothing else. If you just follow that going through the rest of this year, you will get the understanding that you need to do it independently. You'll know when to do something, when not to do something. You'll understand how to place a stop loss. You'll understand what it feels like to get in there doing it and desensitize yourself. That means remove all that fear and anxiety that you're feeling about doing it incorrectly. You're going to do it incorrectly, but that incorrectly done process doesn't always equate to failure. What causes failure? Repetitively going in, fixing what you think is an error. It's just a transaction that didn't pan out. And it took something away that wasn't a deposit in money, a loss, a loss of time. You're going to see we're going to be in moves, and this will be a hypothetical. This is where your stop would be. I'm not going to push the button. There won't be a hard stop there, but I'll be communicating where I think it should be. And the market will go down to that level. Okay. Well, if it's at a point at which would be break even, you got to think about what that felt like to be in that trade, have unrealized profits. You haven't, you haven't got out of the movie, but you're seeing it. It would be four and a half handles, maybe eight handles, maybe 10 handles. 